Let's shoot over to the Pittsburgh side of things. Are we ushering in the new guard of the Pittsburgh Steelers here, baby? We got. I mean, you have to. I mean, you can't. You can't. You can't bench Trubisky and then be like, "Oh no, we're gonna play yeah. Trubisky again." I Which he wasn't playing absolutely terrible to begin that game. And if Devonte or if Deontay uh, Johnson had not had caught the first ball, that went into right. an interception. And then later in the game, had a beautiful ball that should have been a touchdown but Deontay couldn't quite get his feet in like if Deontay would have made those two plays it would have been a different story for Mitch yeah. but then Mitch goes out and makes some terrible fucking throws too right well, they're just like god damn it Mitchell it's Mitchell yeah. yeah could you know bad on third down could it be a little bit of you know the fans unfair and unlucky for Mitchell a slightly maybe yeah. so but like it was just it, it was tangible the way the team and the stadium reacted to Kenny yeah. Pickett getting in there, and it just seemed like definitely a different vibe with Pickett in there. Right, and you know the and if if maybe if there would have been a little bit more, um, if the offense hadn't been so flat for three weeks with Mitchell, you know maybe you would have bought yourself a little bit more time if you would have had just a couple of quarters of good offense from Mitchell uh, throughout. He probably could have bought him fought through that little lull he was having in the first half and you come in and Kenny Pickett comes right in and just starts delivering man you, yeah he's, he's also one and three so I mean if you're losing games you're gonna get benched well sure but that's what but part of that is because the offense you know he wasn't the really offensive doing line sucks too you know, yeah but Kenny made it work the thing yeah. with Mitchell is he is athletic like Kenny like he can run around and that's always been my thing with Mitchell is like I think that's when he's at his best is when he is moving around and running a decent amount. You saw Kenny come right in and use the athleticism, that four seven forty speed yeah. to kind of move around and then he got down to the goal line and he snuck a couple in. I'd pretty much say that just about any of those picks aren't really Kenny Pickett's fault. Uh the last one was a Hill Mary. Right. One of them was a tip pass. Um, and it was a little bit high, right. and the announcers were like, "You probably shouldn't have made that throw," which I get it, but it hit it hit Firemuth's boat, it hit his hands, yeah. And then the other one was Claypool, and it hit his fucking hands, right. And Claypool, like, stop being a little bitch, man. Go up and make these fucking plays. You're gonna brag about hey, being the, the third, third best receiver. player in the fucking league, and you can't like go Plays. up and make a contested catch like what the fuck? I'm so done with Claypool. Acts like uh, acts like uh, Tarzan and plays like Jane. You know? Shout out to <laughs> former Penn State kicker Robbie Gold. Mm. That's Who do we bummer. say that about? Uh, that's what that was. Uh, uh, that, was like that, was, that was Evan like Silva Jane. about um, somebody. I think uh, one that, of the, that, the that, running backs, the one that he said Balage. Uh, became oh. a Balage. He said he was a better between the tackles runner. No, I, I think I said that. We said that. But he was trying to say that Balage was a better between the tackles runner than he was receiving back. Do we have to rehash this again? Every time, with sure, him. he can't let it go. <laughs> well, you did. You didn't recall correctly. Oh, I 100 percent know that he, he said didn't that. know. Yes, it doesn't matter. Um, Kenny Pickett coming back in, Maybe he and, said that. and what we saw was, I think, potentially ushering in the new. Like there was some great throws to Fryermuth. All of a sudden, Kenny Pickett comes alive. Now, to be fair, Mitchell was targeting Kenny, but Kenny kind of comes alive here. Uh, Deontay Johnson seemed like the odd man out, and Claypool could just SDs on the sideline because that guy's he sucks. Just just a bit soft, it seems like. Doesn't doesn't play to what you think he should be playing to, right? I mean, I yeah, I mean he he had that one huge game last year, and right, it might even been two years ago. Was it two years ago? I, I think it know. was. I don't know. He had four touchdowns in the game. I think right. it was two years ago. Um, so you know we're about to. We, we saw George Pickens have a nice little breakout game. Yeah. Um, if, if he's out there in your redraft leagues, pick him up. Um, <laughs> pick him up! You know. Pickens him up! Yeah, there's there's there just seemed to be a little bit of chemistry there. It looked like Fryermuth, as soon as he came in, uh, Pickett delivered an absolute dime to Fryermuth while he was getting smashed. Um, and, you know, I think... What we could be seeing here is is we've been th this offense has just been so stale for so long. Yeah, the last two and a half years with Ben, you know, being a veteran and knowing how to facilitate the ball to move it somewhat. Yeah, but just not being like just seeing the movement of Kenny and then standing in there and delivering big throws downfield. Um, it just it felt different out there with with Kenny at the helm, and I really liked what you saw from from George Pickens and it seems like maybe that we're about to get you know a potential breakout here for for George Pickens now would I say put him in your lineup this week no no uh, put but, him on your 
You could do worse, but yeah, I don't. I don't it's necessarily a rough want to start here. It's a rough stretch oh, here yeah. for Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh's next four games are have it written down: Bills, Tampa, Bills, Tampa, Miami, and the Eagles. And the, yeah, so a lot of negative game scripts there too, uh, potentially. Or maybe we just see the offense actually being able to score some points here. Yeah, um, which they're they're loaded. There's yeah, have, it's a fun and, offense, except for the line is a little bit suspect. But you know, still ridiculous skill position players. I was surprised, like. Pickens was getting some good run with Trubisky early in the game. And then, you know, when you come in and your first real throw, you throw to to, to uh, Claypool and he lets you down like that. Like, probably not going back to that fucking guy on a 50-50 ball. The rest of that shit went to Pickens. And, like, I think only maybe completed two or three passes to Pickens uh, from Pickett. But, or reverse that. Um, I get Pickett's and Pickens confused here. But, like, Pitt, you know, them boys were probably playing together on the second team in the preseason yep. and yep. whatnot in training camp. And, like, you know, you could see the instant connection. He threw that beautiful back shoulder fade, and Pickens went up and got it and, well, that, and then made that, that catch along the sideline. And then that ball there just, I think, is everything that this offense was missing with Mitchell. It just seemed like there was so much confidence in that throw. Mm-hmm. And them boys just being on the same page. The, the coverage was pretty good, but he just said, hey, my guy's better than your guy. I'm going to give him this little back shoulder kind of fade here and it's going to be a nice little piece you know it doesn't need to be difficult all the time let's just keep this simple i think uh pickett's got some familiarity with canada the offensive coordinator so those are all positives and he, he fits a little bit more of what canada wants to do as far as moving pockets bootlegging yeah i mean they're gonna to have to with that line too right um and you know i uh i i was a huge pickett fan it it, it Hasn't been that fun forever. You know, you've had this, you had this crazy off season and this crazy momentum swing on him. And it's just nice to see him out there doing things that you know that he's capable of doing and that it just it seems like maybe you just got kickstarted into some, some Kenny Pickett startability here. Almost, I think he's baby. starting and I think he's worth starting in super flex, but not in one QB leagues. Would you trade Burks for Pickens? Yeah. I'm already regret. I took Perks over Pickens, and I'm not sure why I did that. I did it late in the rookie draft, and I, I was like, I think Burks might have some more immediate production. That yeah. didn't work out, and I was like, I almost took Pickens. I should have just taken him. I don't know. I, I would, I would definitely trade you Burks for Pickens right now. I know you got a lot of Burks. You're not gonna give me Pickens, so I'm booked because I don't have any Pickens. Whoop. Go baby, go baby. We're Boom! Watching, we're watching the Monday Night Football game in the background for those of you He's dirty. wondering what the fuck y'all are talking about. I can't even pronounce his name. It was a pick six. That safety? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's been balling out this year. Uh, so, yeah, I would definitely Hufunga. trade Burks for Pickens. That's pretty easy. Hufunga. Yeah. You guys got anything more on Pickens? Uh, not really. Like I said, I mean, you probably don't want to throw him in your starting lineup or Pickett or Pickens. Either one. Um, Pickens... Probably don't want to throw them in your starting lineup right now. I'm not now, starting either of them. I think you're getting a little berth of kickstart of, hey, yeah, we're, we might sure. be seeing the beginning of this. Pick him up and redraft if he's out there. I know he's out there in one of the redraft leagues. He had eight targets, six receptions, 102 yards. Um, and I think, you know, he could be – we say this all the time. I think there's going to be a change in the guard. I think he's going to move into the Claypool, like getting more snaps and targets since when, Claypool. And well, he's been playing a reasonable amount phased out. Yeah, already. Claypool's edged him by just a little bit. Yeah, and I think I think we're going to. We talk about this all the time. When a new quarterback comes in, who's his who's guy? His guy? And you know, I don't know that Deontay Johnson's going to be the odd man out. I think he'll, he'll be just fine. Yeah. Um, but Pickens could be his guy. You know, Cooper Cup wasn't Cooper Cup until Stafford got there. Uh, he he was always that. good, but he wasn't he wasn't sure. fucking the best receiver in the NFL. Good, um, he wasn't twelve catches you know, for hundred yards. Good. It's it all it it just depends on you know who's who's in there. Uh, it's something that you always worry about when you change quarterbacks. Who's going to get those targets? How are they going to get them? Uh, what's the rapport going to be like? And it seemed like Pickens just right off the rip with Pickett just had a little mojo kind of yeah. working. So. That makes me Almost happy. Almost even with the snaps and routes run this past Between week. Between Claypool and Pickens? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty exciting, man. I, I liked I, – that, that was a fun fourth quarter. Um, you know, maybe there's a little buy low window with, with Najee Harris right now being hurt coming into the season and not necessarily maybe seeing the best of him right now. Really just hasn't been scoring the touchdowns and quite getting the receptions that he needs. But I think if we can get this offense moving – 
and we yeah. could stop being like, hey, they're they're gonna run it with fucking uh, Najee right now. It's not three yards in a cloud of dust, right? Um, you know, and he's not being contacted two yards behind the line of scrimmage when he touches the ball every time. If you could be moving the pocket and doing different things and getting him involved in the pass game a little more and uh, getting him a couple touchdowns, there could be a, a, a slight buy low window if you want. I know there's a lot of hate out there on Najee that he sucks and he should have never been up this high in fantasy rankings anyway. So, I mean, if you looked at what he did and the usage, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. And we, we've we gone to bat for Najee since he's since he's came out. But, uh, you know, JBB or JJB hit us up and said, should Najee Harris be considered a little bit of a panic and if so, what's a reasonable trade in y'all's minds? You were just basically saying go buy low no, on Najee. I so wouldn't panic. I'm not trying to panic. I'm not trying to sell him. You see how easy it is for Warren out there when he gets the ball because they're not worried about him. And like, hopefully, like you said, I like saw some picket. stat where there was like when when Najee was in there, like it was like negative, you know, two yards or negative one point six. You know, when the first defender's contacting him, and when Warren's in there, it's like plus five, like. You know, yeah. that's just because they're just like, oh, shit, it's not Najee back there. Let's back up. Let's figure some else, some other shit to, to focus on. And then, he's, you know, he looks pretty good. Always Quick. been a theory of mine. I'd love to talk to somebody who played in the league and knows more than I. And I think that kind of varies from player to player. But it's always been like when the guy who the every that, the, that they prep for all week isn't in there. Is it almost like good? That guy's not fucking in there. We don't care if he really if the other guy back there gets the ball, because sometimes it like, you know, I know Tony Pollard's a good player, but it almost seems like when it's Tony Pollard's backfield and solely his backfield, he's not nearly as good as when he's accompanied by somebody else and he's kind of not necessarily getting all focus on him throughout the week. Well, yeah, but there's been plenty of other running backs. Is it the fact that he's in the game or is the fact that he's fresher? Uh, I don't know. I would say... I don't know. That's a good... Because he's been fresh when Zeke was out. I think it's... That was kind of the the beginning of the argument. A pretty hard position to... I don't. I think. I don't think freshness, in a lot of cases, matters. Uh, running backs a, a a rhythm position to me. I understand um, that. I understand that. So, I don't know. Uh, but that was always something that's always floated around in my mind. All right, what do we got next?